Guys, I know I've made these types of videos before, but I never expected to go down a rabbit hole and discover a whole f new universe. The whole Space Ghost Perp lore is absolutely insane and I'm about to take you through it. You know how I discovered Space Ghost Perp aka SGP? There was a video that popped on my YouTube named Space Ghost Perp This is every human on earth. As anyone would, I was intrigued. Does this include me? Even though I wasn't disrespecting the comments, I want to say fuck the comments. Fuck the comments. F black people. F white people. F Hispanic people. Fuck all you motherfuckers. I don't care about nobody. I don't give a fuck about nobody. Fuck you. I looked at my hands. Yep. White enough. So yeah, I took offense. <laughs> And the thing is, right, this guy used to be huge in 2011 to 2013, and a question arises, right, he used to be huge in those years, and then I found out he was fingering himself while rapping Purple Swag by ASAP Rocky <laughs> live on Periscope. You see, SGP was already born in the worst city in the world. Miami. And what's the most respectable about it is that he began rapping at age 5, bro, and producing at age 13, which is insane to rap at 5 years old. As probably every single member of Raider Clan, he started off by skateboarding and then wanted to pursue a career in music. So he graduated high school early and started uploading music in 2010. He created a YouTube channel named Space Ghost Perp MJ23 on May 23, 2010. And his early releases contained series of visuals that included perped and chopped songs with uh, 70s to 80s Soul Train aesthetics such as Summer Jam Perp. In August 2010, when he would be around 19 years old, he started working on NASA, the mixtape, and he formed a hip-hop collective, Raider Clan, in 2008, along with Dodo the Don. He also recruited various rap artists to Raider Clan, including Denzel Curry, Xavier Wolf, Young Simi, Nell, Chris Travis, Rel, Amber London, and Kenyatta among many others, and of course, Black Cray. So between the end of 2010 and early 2011, SGP began collaborating with Lil Ugly Mane, aka Travis Miller, and then finally, we're getting to one of the most important moments in his career, he started working on the mixtape Blackland Radio 666, and when it came out, it had a, like a limited acclaim, because kind of nobody knew who SGP was, so it didn't get many reviews, you know, like if, if, if if you drop some random ass SoundCloud song, it will not get many reviews. But Pitchfork still reviewed it, gave it a 7.1 out of 10, and said that Blackland Radio 666 is a mess of 3 6 Mafia chanting, woozy Wu Tang loops, DJ Screw Wheeze, and Mortal Kombat and Godzilla sound effects, all paired with an off the dome rapping style that's equal parts Lil Wayne and Lil B. Which is fair enough, because you have to realize that this was a one of SGP's first releases. And after it was released in 2011, he announced that he was working on 5 mixtapes that were all to be released that year. But the thing is, it, they never released because S SGP kinda got distracted. He dropped singles for all these mixtapes, but he never released these mixtapes due to his change of direction once he became friends with ASAP Rocky and stayed in New York to collaborate with the ASAP Mob. And on that summer, he was also working with Speak and Juicy J. The thing is, the ASAP mob plays a huge part in SGP's career and in his downfall, specifically ASAP Rocky. So SGP went to New York in August to live and work with ASAP mob because ASAP Rocky was a fan of his, you know? In late 2011, ASAP Yams, RIP, a co-founder of the at the time independent ASAP mob collective, discovered SGP through the popular porn sharing website Tumblr. Then Yams told SGP he enjoyed his Blackland Radio 66 six mixtape because like it was a good it, it was a good ass mixtape some it gave, even gave it like a four out of five pitchfork gave it a 7.1 but then again fuck pitchfork they have no idea what they're talking about ever so once yams found out about him he you know hey come on come on he invited sgp to come up and to join up with asap mob in new york city and then sgp started producing music for asap rocky who was a big fan of space ghost perps music including Keep it G from Live Love ASAP, which was like literally Rocky's breakout mixtape. And then everything turned to shit. 
Space Ghost Purp and ASAP Mob remained friends until SGP had an argument with ASAP 12V on Twitter in December of 2011. And this led to Rocky dissing Raider Clan on the song Yao Ming Remix and then both of the guys went full on keyboard warrior mode because of course things were starting to heat up and then they started fighting on Twitter and the fight was literally just Space Ghost Purp against all of ASAP Mob. But you see guys, Space Ghost Purp was so influential. <laughs> You see guys, Space Ghost Perp was so influential, he even started off fighting on Twitter. But then, you know, like things kinda calmed down, and even like a week after, Rocky dropped Pretty Flacco as a shoutout to the thrill wave genre in the Space Ghost Perp. And then, okay, yeah, you know, like they were on good terms again. Up until April of 2012 when ASAP Mob played an unreleased SGP track at Coachella. Then they got into an argument again and then it ended on bad terms through SGP and Yams. And then this is where ASAP Mob went truly dumb. And they actually deserve SGP's hate for this, right? Because they used some of SGP's music production without giving him any credit to make the tracks I Need Money which became a Max Julian and suddenly by ASAP Rocky. Even though they did that, the feud was quiet and they seemed to be on good terms up until former Raider Clan member Stoops was assaulted by ASAP 12 in June 2012. And then this caused the feud between SGP and 12 to reach its peak and eventually extend to the entirety of like the both groups, ra both Raider Clan and ASAP Mob. But this do not stay on Twitter again. The feud turned physical in November when affiliates of Raider Clan, including Space Ghost Perp, attacked members of ASAP Mob outside Miami. So then ASAP Nast called the police <laughs> and SGP got arrested. Here's the picture. So yeah, now th the war was on, bro. Even in March 2013, Space Ghost Perp and his affiliates once again attacked ASAP Mob on their home turf, bro, in New York. But the feud began to die down and just transfer from physical feud to Twitter. According to SGP, the feud with ASAP Mob was resolved before the death of Yams in 2015, but ASAP Bari prevented SGP and ASAP from reuniting. And then just like the beef continue to go on and to this day right SGP is tweeting shit and ASAP Rocky is talking shit and the thing you guys will soon realize is that Space Ghost Perp is an absolute menace because before he got banned off Twitter which can he obviously did he used to tweet a lot of shit about ASAP Yams and even make fun of his death one of his mixtapes, which was released in 2020, was also called Space Ghost Pussy Response, End of ASAP Rocky, aka ASAP Sissy Pony. <laughs> yeah, bro, calling ASAP Rocky ASAP Sissy Ponies is phenomenal. And while all this was going on, he was in the process of releasing his mixtape, Mysterious Funk, The Chronicles of Space Ghost Perp. And in early 2012, he signed a one-off record deal with the British indie label 4AD and began remixing tracks from his earlier mixtapes for his debut album Mysterious Funk. Most of his early songs feature samples from train whistles, female porn stars, and drops of the soundtracks from Mortal Kombat. His debut album was released in June 12th of 2012 and consists of mostly remix tracks from previous mixtapes. He also worked with Juicy J and has produced a number of tracks from his Blue Dream and Lean album. At that year, SGP had also revealed in an interview that there is an upcoming project between him and Odd Future. And Odd Future has supported him by playing his music at shows since he released Blackland Radio. And in July, he began his first tour with the punk band Trash Talk. But it was, it was like a mini tour which lasted from July 16th to the 23rd, so like a week, and they performed four shows in California, one in Oregon, and two in Washington. At that time, his song The Black God was named number 46 on Pitchfork's 50 best songs of 2012 list. So yeah, things seemed to be going pretty well, but it will not last a long time after that. You see, there's a reason why people call Space Ghost Perp influential, because literally everyone copied him including i mean obviously asap mob copied him but in 2014 he also released 
an 18 track mixtape called BMW 2 Intoxicated which included no features and had a lofi sound of his earlier mixtapes and a few months later it was remastered had some tracks removed a new track added and released as an album on iTunes under the name Intoxicated with triple X did XXX Tentacion get his name from Intoxicated hmm I don't know and to be honest in 2014 2015 he went wild he released so many mixtapes it's insane so in January he also released 58 Blunts of Perp, then he released Intoxicated, then in early 2015 he released two projects, Dark Angel on January the 13th and a second project, Money Mendoza on January 25th, literally 12 days after that. And then he decided to leave the worst city on the planet, Miami, and move to Atlanta which is located in the second best Georgia on the planet. There he made music with artists such as Father and OG Mako. This guy's grind was insane. In April he released two more compilations. One was titled Veneno, it was basically an extended version of the EP released that year. The other was titled Pyro Era, but it did not include any inflation porn. This was a different pyro era and it consisted of mostly of loose tracks released in 2014 and 15 and on the 9th of May another EP called Richest Revenge under his uh, nickname Money Mendoza was released on his Instagram. Another conflict on June Dej Loaf released a song featuring Young Thug Tile Shorty uh, which featured a sample of the song Raider Prayers instrumental of SGP's Mysterious Funk and Space Ghost Perp was uncredited by the producer resulting in a minor conflict via Twitter which was soon resolved peacefully. And then came 2016. And the thing is, he also released a lot of more songs, a lot of more mixtapes, but at this point I don't think this is important because the main thing is what happened after all those mixtapes that really fucked him up, right? Somewhere along the lines, you see, he started beefing with every single person in the world literally every single south florida member rapper hates him for example carty used to be an asap mob hater and a raider clan fan and literally all of awful records were huge sgp fans here are some tweets from carty saying i support the clan fuck asap and perp is a god and then some weird shit happened right because perp got jumped by asap barry again and somehow got everyone to join asap slash vilone and the only one who st stayed loyal to sgp were the guys in goth money and then they all started taking shots at space ghost perp for some reason for example here's lil yari tweeting at sgp damn dog you god then after the jumping shit he tweeted space ghost perp a hundred percent pussy uzi was also a fan of perp and reached out to him for beats here's a tweet from him saying me and sgp got some shit on the way you see a lot of tweets are deleted because all of sgp's twitter got disabled so most of the tweets you'll find are either screenshots or just other people tagging sgp in their own tweets perps had an insane amount of beef with probably every person on earth after he tweeted shit like fuck yams after he died etc etc denzel curry also dissed him with fucking space ghost pussy the song and i don't know man this thing is like very weird to see and yeah i'm sure i'm gonna get some comments saying that i missed out on uh, some of his mixtapes and i didn't mention it or i didn't mention like one certain beef but the thing is sgp has had so many beefs and he's released so much stuff i only want to go over the most important ones to not make the video too boring. But the thing is, SGP still retains a fan base to this day, right? A lot of people say he fell off, but I don't know, for example, he dropped a song like one year ago and it, it has like 600k views, which is not that bad actually, you know? If he dropped more songs, he would have more views, but when you go on his YouTube, he's only dropped two songs since 2020 and nothing else, you know? I mean, he did he did drop like a mixtape, but that's all you can see on his YouTube. But when you check the comments, it's still very positive, you know? For example, on Date County, <laughs> there's a comment saying, Kaleju, let us know what rap is gonna sound like in five years. And yeah, like these views are going up and the, the people are actually supporting him now. Seeing these views go up puts a smile on my face, considering the fact of how everyone treats this man. Bro, he's actually serious this time, let's support him for real, for real. Yes sir, we forever loyal to you, perp. You changed music and a serious genius. 
love you for life. No matter how hard the scene and industry tire try to implicate him, this man can never fall. I don't care. And the thing is, even though SGP is an asshole, a lot of people in the whole scene were assholes to him as well. You cannot say that the fact that the story I told you, how people treated him was fair, or if you got treated that way, you would not be like, hey, fuck all those people as well, you know? So yeah, I think that we should give SGP a second chance. Like and subscribe. Bye-bye.